The iPhone SE making a comeback, Google goes head to head with the iPhone 11 and the AirPods, and is Apple working on a smart ring? Let's get to all the Apple news and rumors starting now. Low cost and iPhone in the same sentence. You didn't hear that wrong, it's the iPhone SE 2. We've heard rumblings over the past few weeks that the iPhone SE might be getting a sequel. Instead of that iconic design though, which is familiar from the iPhone 4 and 5, expect it to look more like the iPhone 8. According to longtime Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, the new phone would be this spiritual successor to the iPhone SE, which came out in 2016, not its identical twin. That means a 4.7-inch display, which is bigger than the iPhone SE's 4-inch screen. Around the back, it could have a single camera rather than the dual camera design on the iPhone 11. And inside, it's not going to be a slouch either, with Quo predicting that the A13 Bionic chip with 3GB of RAM will be there, plus a 64 or 128GB option. And colours could be more simple than the iPhone 11, with space grey, silver and red. Now, none of this is new tech inside, but the idea is that Apple would keep the cost low enough, probably around $399 US dollars, to entice people coming from older phones to stick with the iPhone. Don't forget that older phones like the iPhone 6 are no longer able to update to iOS 13 anymore. So why does Apple need a new iPhone SE? Well, let's break it down a bit. The cheapest new iPhone is currently the iPhone 8, which is 449 US dollars. Now it sounds insignificant, but even shaving $50 off that price on a phone with newer internals suddenly opens up a whole new market, particularly in countries outside the US. It's more important than ever that Apple has devices that span the entire price bracket, particularly in markets like India where not only are manufacturers like Samsung selling a lot more phones, but premium smartphones, which is anything that costs over the equivalent of 450 US dollars, only makes up around 4% of the market. One thing we can probably be sure of is that this new phone probably won't be called the iPhone SE 2. Keep an eye out for it in the first quarter of 2020, maybe in March. And if you're interested in the history and some really great analysis of the iPhone SE, I highly recommend you go watch Rene Ritchie's video, which I've linked to in the description below. We are halfway through Techtober, and Google has just taken the wraps off the new Pixel 4 and the Pixel Buds. Let's get a quick look at how oranges compare to apples, well, because why not for a tech show? First up, the Pixel 4 comes in two sizes, a 5.7 inch and 6.3 inch OLED screen with a 90 Hertz refresh rate. The Pixel uses Google's Motion Sense radar system for gesture control and has an infrared camera for secure face unlock just like Apple's Face ID. On paper though, Apple's got the advantage of three cameras, a regular wide angle and an ultra wide angle for its 12 megapixel cameras around the back, plus the addition of a telephoto lens on the 11 Pro. Google's decided that a regular wide angle and telephoto is the way to go. Now both of these phones use a lot of computational photography tricks, but the Pixel promises a revamped portrait mode and astrophotography in night mode, amongst some other things. I can't wait to see how Deep Fusion stacks up to the Pixel camera, so stay tuned for the comparisons. Also announced were the Pixel Buds, and here it's hard not to draw comparisons to the AirPods, thanks to that similar looking case, although the Pixel Buds sit inside your ear and don't have a stem. Google's Buds will be $179 compared to $159 for the AirPods, and they have the same battery life, which is 5 hours in the Buds themselves and 24 hours total charge from the case. But the Pixel Buds won't be available until spring 2020, and by then, who knows, we might even have the AirPods 3. Just when you thought the list of rumored Apple products wasn't long enough, like AR glasses, Bluetooth tracking tag, and so on, we have another potential candidate to add to that list, a smart ring. This week, Apple Insider revealed a patent that shows a ring that could potentially offer a lot of what the Apple Watch does, but it's on your finger instead of on your wrist. Now, this was originally filed back in 2015, but it was only recently granted by the US Patent and Trademark Office. The patent shows a ring with a touchscreen, processor, wireless transceiver, a microphone, and some sensors to detect hand gestures. Plus, there's a dial that could be maybe a mini digital crown like on the Apple Watch. Now, some of those gestures include swiping or maybe flicking to adjust menu settings or pointing to open a link. 
How useful will a smart ring actually be? Well, for one, I think it will be really interesting to see how it could reduce friction between wanting to control something like, say, answering a phone call without pulling out a phone or gazing at your watch. And Apple is not alone in trying to find other places on your body to put devices. The $130 Amazon Echo Loop, announced a few weeks ago, has a microphone so you can talk to your assistant, plus a tiny speaker and an action button. And it works on Android and iOS. On last week's show, I asked you what features you wanted on the rumored AirPods 3, AirPods Pro, or whatever they're gonna be called. And a lot of you had some great suggestions. So Apple, if you're listening, here is our ultimate wish list. Snickers says, Shorter stem, noise cancelling, heartbeat monitor, hey Siri, one hour more audio playback. Roma wants a faster connection, less delay and better sound quality. Paige votes for noise cancelling, better staying in my ears and better battery life. Nikhil says type C in the charging port, yes please. And Milky has a great one, a new proximity sensor that the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro have, which is that U1 chip that'll make it easy to find them if you've lost them. Some great suggestions there. Thank you for all your comments. I do read every single one of them, so please keep them coming. And this week, seeing as we're on the suggestions train, I would love to hear your thoughts on what you want from a cheaper iPhone. Apart from, of course, you know, being less expensive than the current iPhone 11. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to come back next week for more news and rumors on the Apple Core.